Hey everyone, Tom and Felicia here with Good Hope DIY. We are competing at our very first Ugly Duckling Furniture Flip Challenge, hosted by Corey over at Desert DIY. The challenge consists of a bunch of very talented YouTubers that are tasked with taking an ugly piece of furniture and completely transforming it into something beautiful. I have a link to Corey's channel and a link to the playlist down below in the description. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the other great YouTubers videos that are going to be posting to this challenge. Alright, so this is our Ugly Duckling. It's a 1980s rustic hutch cabinet thing that's missing the top. Uh, this thing has been painted in some horrible latex paint and it wasn't even painted well. Uh, the paint's peeling all over the place. Uh, one of the doors is broken off. Uh, I don't even think the, the correct hinges are there for it anymore. It just seems to be one hinge for that one door. Uh, I think the door on the other side is completely missing. Uh, we don't even have it. Uh, you can see the paint's just chipping. There's gouges in the cabinet, chunks missing out of it. Uh, this thing has, uh, has had a rough life. Uh, up here at the top, uh, I think you'll see it looks like maybe even a dog has been chewing on it. So uh, this is what we have to work with. All right, so first we're going to start off uh, giving it a heavy dose of the Clean Strip Premium Stripper. It's the 15 minute and, uh, and get it on there really good and, and see if, if hopefully we can loosen up some of this really thick white latex paint. Uh, it's just, it's on there. I want to get this done in, in just one strip. I didn't really want to have to do it twice. Uh, you know that the smell of that stuff is is so bad. It works great, but yeah, it's just uh, the smell just gets to me. We're covering it in plastic. Uh, my shop is air conditioned, so the heat and the humidity really isn't that much of an issue. But I just I wanted to take all precautions it's just to try to get this to work on the on the one try. All right, so after 15 minutes, I went ahead and pulled the plastic off and uh, Felicia started scraping it. Uh, with the one application, it, it did fantastic. It, it came off really well, so we didn't have to do a second one, which was, uh, which was a blessing for us. All right, so after Felicia finished scraping it, I just took my random orbit sander with a 120 and then just went over trying to get off the rest of that uh, the paint that the stripper had missed. And after the 120, I went back over the whole top again using a 220 grit sandpaper. All right, now this is where things kind of took a turn and started to get crazy. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm marking uh, the face frame on both sides of the cabinet. I've got it flipped over on its back. Uh, this is the bottom section that had the two larger drawers on it. Uh, so I'm just going to mark that and then I'm going to use my multi tool and go through and just cut the face frame through on both sides, the left and the right. All right, after I get the face frame cut, I went ahead and marked the sides of the cabinet and then just used my uh, circular saw and went through and just cut down both sides, even with the face frames on the front. All right, I've got the cabinet flipped over and I'm just using my track saw just to cut the, the panel off the back of the cabinet. Uh, that is not actually my angry face. That's my I've got sawdust flying in my face look. All right, after I got the bottom of this thing cut off, I went ahead and flipped it over. And I just added some more lumber in up underneath it just to, uh, to give it a little bit more stability. Uh, I just wood glue, screwed, and Brad nailed it on. And it'll give us something to add some legs on to. Okay, okay, I get it. I know what some of y'all are saying. This is cheating. But with the amount of work I have to do in this cabinet, I need all the help I could get. So I went ahead and loaded some MDF into my CNC machine. And I uh, got it to go ahead and cut out all the skirting uh, for this cabinet while I'm working on other things. All right, so my buffet needed a set of legs, and I happened to have four old chair legs sitting off in the corner of my shop that I decided to repurpose 
I'm just going to put them up on my miter saw and just uh, cut them down to size and uh, get some of the detail in them that I want to keep for the uh, buffet. All right, I need something to attach my legs and the skirting to. So I took some 2x2 two two and I cut it down to about 3.5 inches. And then I found the center of that and drilled a hole and added a wooden dowel and some wood glue. And then I drilled a corresponding hole into the cabinet. And that way I can line the two up. I also drilled pocket holes on the back side of the 2x2 two two and on the side of the 2x2. Two and that way I can just take a uh, pocket hole screw and just screw it down and securely fasten it all together. All right, now with all my two by twos in place, I'm just using some wood glue and pocket hole screws and just going through and adding all the skirting in. All right, with all my skirting in, I needed two back legs. So what I did is I took some more two by two and I went ahead and marked it off and I'm just cutting and notching it out now on the bandsaw uh, just to get it so the legs will, will fit down inside the cabinet and then sit up on top of the cabinet also. All right, so now I got the leg cut out. I went ahead and put two pocket holes in the back and then two pilot holes in the, the lower part that sits down inside the cabinet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take some pocket hole screws and then gobs of wood glue, if you can't see it squeezing out right now all over the place, and just fasten those two legs to the back side of the cabinet. All right, now my back legs are in. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the pieces of skirting that go on either side of the buffet table. And I've just got those going in with just more wood glue and pocket screws. All right, anyone that's ever sanded table legs or chair legs before knows what a pain it is. I needed these to be down to completely bare wood. So I just stuck them in my lathe and turned it on and just held a piece of sandpaper there and until I got them completely stripped down. All right, after I got my legs all finally sanded down to bare wood, I went ahead and took and added some threaded rod to them and then found the center point of my two by twos and I added some wood glue and uh, just basically just threaded them in place. I did this for all four of them across the front. All right, so after looking at this thing, I did not like the top that was on it. It was just a, a rustic looking top. Uh, it was it was thick. It had some fake breadboard ends on it, and uh, it just it didn't fit the look I was going for. It just I didn't like it. Uh, so what I did is I went and picked up uh, two two by tens, uh, and I went ahead and just cut them down to size of the original top, and uh, I'm just gonna run them through the planer and just get both sides of the boards just really good and flat uh, so when I do glue them together it just has a really good tight seam and you can't won't be able to see the gap in the boards it'll it'll look like one complete just solid top on there all right now that I got both boards jointed I'm just going to go through and add some wood glue and uh, get them clamped up good and tight all right after the glue dried I went ahead and took the clamps off and I'm just taking a 120 grit and I'm just going to go over the whole top and the seams where they were glued together and uh, just get it sanded down real good. And then after that, I'm going to go back over it again with a 220. All right, what I've got are the two bottom drawers that were at the bottom of this hutch uh, that I cut off. I don't need these drawers anymore, but I do want to save these drawer faces because I plan on using these to replace the two that are up on the top of the cabinet. All right, once I cut through the other side, I went ahead and flipped the, the drawer over and I'm going to use the multi-tool and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to keep it as tight to the face as I can and just run the multi-tool right down that seam and cut it loose till it comes off. And, uh, and hopefully I, I won't drop it on the floor. All right, now this is the drawer that we are keeping, but we're just not going to be keeping that ugly drawer face. All right, now that we've got the drawer faces off, uh, they're way too big to fit the drawers that we are keeping. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them up on my miter saw, and I'm actually just going to cut the center section out of the drawers so we can get them down smaller to fit. All right, now that we've got the drawer faces cut down, I'm just going to go ahead and use some wood glue and just glue the two together. And then I'm just going to put some bar clamps on them and, uh, and clamp them up and let them dry. All right, once the glue dried, I went and took the clamps off. And I just took my sander just to smooth them down because there's little ridges there where the drawers just didn't quite even up right. Uh, but I went ahead and took care of those with the sander and just got them all nice and smooth. Once I got them sanded down, I just used some wood filler just to go over the seam, just to make sure there was no gaps visible. Alright, and after the wood filler dried, I just took a sanding block and just went over and smoothed it all out. Alright, I picked these accents up. I want to say it was at Home Depot, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I got these to add to the skirting across the front of this buffet. Uh, you know, it just needed something to give it a little bit more of that, uh, that vintage feel. Alright, for the next task at hand are the doors. If you remember right, I was missing a door to the cabinet. So what I did is I used the cutoffs from the tabletop, and I'm just going to run them through my router and create the rabbits that go around the inside of the door panels. Next, I took some half-inch MDF. And I kind of made a little pattern on top of it that I'm cutting out with my bandsaw. And we're going to make like a little decorative panel that will sit up on top of our new cabinet doors. Just to give them a little bit of detail. All right, after I got my panels cut out and I went ahead and routed the edges, I, uh, I glued them down on top of our door panel and then just used my brad nailer just to kind of tack them in place till the glue dried. Next, I added some more of those ornamental accents to the corners of my doors just to give it a little bit more of that Victorian feel. Meanwhile, while I was doing all that, Felicia was hard at work scrubbing down and cleaning this thing, getting it ready for paint. I used some saran wrap to wrap the table legs, because these aren't going to get painted. These are actually going to get stained in a finish. Alright, we finally got this thing moved into the paint booth. And if you can see past my big bald head, there's a piece of rope molding I forgot to put on. So we're going to go ahead and add that now before we start painting. All right, I'm using the Zinzer 123 primer, and I'm just going to go over everything with that, just to put one good coat on there, and then I'll go through and lightly sand any spots and fix anything that might show up. All right, now that the primer's dry, and I went through and sanded and touched up any spots I needed to, I am using bare cabinet enamel in a satin white and I'm going to go through and do two coats of this on the entire piece. After the paint dried I went ahead and removed it off the table and put it down on the floor and I removed the plastic off the legs and I'm using the same finish which is a mid wax dark walnut I did on the top. And I'm going to go through and do all four front legs with that. Now that the paint's dried, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill the drawers for the new drawer faces. And then get some screws and fasten them together. And these drawer faces went from this to this. All right, I've kept you guys waiting long enough. Are y'all ready to see what we turn this ugly duckling into? Well, here it is. Wow, can you believe that this was that old 1980s rustic looking hutch? 
Uh, it was missing a top. It was missing a door. I'm telling you, this was a fun project to do. Uh, it was a ton of work and a ton of time. But uh, I am just over the moon with the way this thing turned out. Yeah, I had a great time doing this challenge, a great time doing this project. So, y'all tell me what you think. Did I nail it out of the park or what? Leave it in the comments below. And thanks, Corey, for letting us be a part of this challenge. And don't forget to check out all the other YouTube channels over on the playlist, too, to see some awesome transformations.